Hi, welcome. Thank you very much for tuning into uh, to this week's episode of How I Choose to Live My Life. And we're coming off of Easter, and I really want to recognize that too. So um, God bless everybody who's uh, celebrated uh, that um, holiday this year. Very important. Um, what I want to do today, first off, is I want to give a huge shout out to my uh, WNBF family, Ken and I with ITR Polygraph. That is our extended family. We truly do love them. And the reason I'm going to give them a shout out today is because it is a different time for them. Charlotte and Leo King, President and Vice President of the WNBF Canada, we would normally be with them celebrating their upcoming events for the spring shows. One in Vancouver, one in Winnipeg, and one in um, Calgary, coming up in the month of May. We would normally be uh, polygraph testing every one of their athletes as they are all natural and they prove it with a polygraph. This year we're missing them all and as they are um, cancelled due to the um, horrible um, COVID virus globally affecting everything. Every um, organization and federation is, is uh, asked to close their events. They are no different and they have respected those rules. But I do want to give a shout out to their athletes and to their federation and to encourage them to stay strong, stay healthy, stay training, stay positive as you always have been. You have been an encouragement to Ken and I and I want to be an encouragement to you today. So I thank you very much because I know that every, this time of year specifically is on your minds. When we left off last week, it was um, I was talking about um, Ken and I changing our life completely, becoming entrepreneurs, moving from St. Albert, Alberta, out to Fawcett, Alberta, which is half an hour north of Westlock. With the help of Joy Ray and, uh, and, and so many people, my family, my friends, um, whether here in St. Albert or in Fawcett, it was a collective um, uh, it was a collective plan and it was incredibly creative in, including the people who helped us to build the store in Fawcett. I don't want to start naming and picking everybody because that's how I forget uh, to name somebody so I'm not going to. Collectively it was um, huge with our family and friends and we couldn't have done it uh, without everybody doing that. And um, so when we started when we chose to move, we sold everything and became grocery store owners. And we um, designed the floor plan. We personally helped to build the building. It was a 2,500 square foot building, two stories. Our home was a, a, on the top floor and our store was on the bottom floor. When we started out, it was a small little grocery store. Over time, it grew to be a grocery store, and then Ken became postmaster for Canada Post. That was an incredible responsibility, and he took it very, very seriously and loved that job and did that very well. We then uh, created, we then um, were able to put a liquor store in. We were far enough out of town, and we were able to have a liquor store in there. And then we also put in a full, full service bakery. And um, if anybody's ever been out that way during that time that happened in uh, 1994 to 2003, Donaldson's Country Market on the way um, north uh, might have stopped there for some baking and it was absolutely delicious. We had all kinds of breads and bakings and everything. And you know, though it was all great, there were all kinds of things that went on during the time that you could never foresee and whether it was things to do with the building itself, maybe some of the, um, you know, we had, we had um, coolers that depended on the water. But sometimes in time we ran out of the water so then our coolers wouldn't work. So how did we solve that problem and things like that? But I want to tell you something. I want to um, give you a little bit of encouragement today and tell a little bit of a story. Because when we started the store, we had our one son, Alexander. He was two. And then I did suffer a miscarriage shortly after, um, you know, Alexander was born and we were wanting to have a large family and so we tried again and sadly I did miscarry. Then 
uh, that was in, uh, Alexander was born in 1992, but then we did have a daughter uh, born, her name is Paige, uh, 1996. But then I did suffer a later miscarriage that was very, very hard. Um, I did require a D DNC and um, it was shocking and it took incredible long time for me to conceive again. But then I did conceive again. And there was a time, and I would like to um, just say something. I graduated from Paul Kane High School here in St. Albert, and under my, in my um, graduation uh, book, um, under my picture, it says in my ambition, I wrote at that time when I was 17, 18 years old, when I graduated high school, I wrote under my ambition that I wanted to be in hotel management, and I also wanted to have a set of identical girl twins. I wrote that back then. I went throughout my life and I would like, I always said that I wanted to have four children by the time I was 30. That's a huge different thing than what people are doing now and I totally get that. But that is how we did things back then, right? Um, so I had said I wanted four children by the time I was 30. But I'd had Alexander and I had miscarried and I had Paige and then I miscarried. I'll tell you, I begged God all the time, please give me them back in twins. Please give me them back in twins. I was coming up to my 30th birthday when um, I found out I was pregnant. And um, it was incredible. But then time went on and it was like I was miscarrying again. So I came from Fawcett and I went to the St. Albert Hospital here in um, here in St. Albert and um, I said I think I'm miscarrying and they um, they immediately took me in and did ultrasound and everything and something wasn't quite right nobody was talking to me they put me back in emerge and um, and then the nurse said just wait here and when she came back in she came back in literally carrying a set of twins that must have been born just recently and she brought them in. She says, you're not miscarrying. This is what you're having. I was completely blown away. And so I'm sharing that story with you and all of these stories with you today to give you some hope and some encouragement that things may not go as planned all the time. But God will use it for good, I believe. That's how I see it. That we're going to go through many trials and many struggles. I suffered I went to many, 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 many funerals, more than I could count, I lost track, of dear friends and family when we lived in Fawcett. Maybe that was preparing my time, my heart, for a different time. But I wanna just leave you with um, this, passage, this passage today. I wanna to say a huge shout out to the, to the men and women and, and the crew members that are still on all different kinds of cruise ships all around the world. Their borders are closed to them. They got all their passengers off safely. Everybody's going back home. And, um, and I pray for the people who had passed away. I pray for the people who um, are recovering. And I also pray for the people who got home. That's awesome. But there are still many, many, many people, uh, crew, who are still on those cruise ships all around the world. And I ask for your um, your prayers and your blessings for them. It's a devastating time for them and I hold them up. And one of the reasons why I want to just read something today is um, to give you some hope, to understand that things don't always go right and how are we going to handle that? This comes out of a, <clears throat> pardon me, a devotional called Mariner's Church. It was given to me by a dear friend of mine that I did meet on a cruise ship with my aunt I was blessed to go on it, and I was blessed to meet her, and she gave me this book, and <clears throat> I just want to read it here. Just give me one moment with my glasses. It says this, and give me one moment. I'm just going to actually, I do have a cup, and I want to give a shout out with my WMBF Canada cup. Hang on just one sec. Um, excuse me, but thank you very much for giving me that time. This says today, it's a portion of today's devotional, and it says this, In no way is it enough to set out cheerfully with God on any venture of faith. You must also be willing to take your ideas 
of what the journey will be like and tear them into tiny pieces. For nothing on the itinerary will happen as you expect. Your guide will not keep to any beaten path. He will lead you through ways you would never have dreamed your eyes would see. He knows no fear and he expects you to fear nothing while he is with you. That's huge. That's a massive, massive um, message. But it is on point with everything that's happening today and it's on point with everything I said today. And I really hope that you find it encouraging. So um, maybe that's something you can ponder this week. But however your circumstance is, let's try to be positive in it and do the best we can. Have a great day and thank you very much for tuning in today. I'll see you next week.